Hello and welcome to Teaching Through Repertoire. You have found Russian Music Box. This is a grade one and it's always an exciting piece for those students who are in their first or second year of playing. This is written by Soon He Newbold, a great composer based down in LA. We're going to start by doing a violin one tutorial. So get your instruments ready and as you're following along with the music, make sure that you stop the video whenever you need to practice something specifically. Ready? Here we go. When you look at the beginning of this music, you see a large black horizontal bar with the number two on top of it. That means you have two measures of silence. So you'll hear the orchestra playing and you have to sit there silently but organizing your sound by counting like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And then you come in at measure three. Now at measure three, that's third finger high D. So make sure your hand is nice and round, you're on your fingertips. You get ready for high D followed by C sharp, first finger B. Now as you get more and more experienced on these instruments, when you have a string crossing and you use a different finger for that string crossing, you learn to prepare your hand. So while you're playing first finger B, you could also play second finger F sharp. And that's called a double stop. So you can prepare your hand to get ready for the next possible note. So if you're having a hard time making that a clean transition from the A string to the D string, you might try practicing framing your hand so you have first finger B down at the same time as second finger F sharp. So the opening measures. And then in measure five, you have this symbol. It looks like the letter V. That's an up bow. So you want to check in with your bow. Are you near or at the tip of the bow? If you are, you're in the correct place. Up bows, generally speaking, start in the middle to the upper half of the bow. Down bows, generally speaking, start at the frog all the way up towards the middle of the bow. So in measure five, we start up bow. So you place the bow on the tip. You have your first finger B. And then in measure six, you have a whole note. Now whole notes get four beats. Now that doesn't mean you play the note and then you just count to four. That means you have to slow your bow down, make your bow a little bit heavier, maybe move your bow a little bit closer to the bridge and sustain the sound for four full beats. Ready? And one, two, three, four. That needs to last all the way to measure seven because we're dealing with musical phrases. So if this was a sentence, really at measure six, all we have is a comma before we finish the rest of that sentence all the way going to measure 11. In measure seven, once again, you have a high D and then you do a string crossing over to F sharp. So get your second finger F sharp ready. F sharp, roll your arm over to open A. Whenever we have something interesting in the bow arm, we have to make sure that our shoulder is relaxed so we can rotate from one string to the other smoothly. Measure 10 is high second finger B. And again, it's a whole note. So what do you do? You sustain it for four beats. That's right. Nice job. Measures 11 and 19 are exactly the same as measures 3 to 11, so let's jump ahead. In measure 19, you see the letter P. That means piano. You're going to play softer because the cellos and the violas actually have music that's more melodic, and we want the audience to hear that. So first, we play softly. Well, how do you do that? A slightly lighter bow, a slightly slower bow. Now let's talk about the notes. You have high second finger B in 19 and first finger A in measure 20, and then you just go back and forth. Here's measure 19 all the way to measure 25. One, two, ready, and two, three, first finger A, second finger B, first finger A. Notice there's no space between the sound, completely and totally connected. Measure 25, that's a whole rest. That little rectangle's hanging by a thread from that fourth line. That means the entire measure is silent. In measure 26, not the same. That's a half rest. It sits on the third line of the staff and that gets two beats of silence. So what you have to do in measures 25 and 26 is get ready to play again. If you look at the end of 26, you have first finger B and then third finger high D. So let's look at 25 and I'll play this with you as I count out loud. Measure 25, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I counted four beats of silence, then I counted two beats of silence and then I played the last two quarter notes of measure 26. Ready? Let's try again. Ready? And one, 
two, three, four, one, two. And that's an important thing to learn. Organizing silence. Can't just start playing whenever you want to. You're in an orchestra. You're in a group. We gotta learn, we'll learn to play together. Looking ahead at measure 27, we get to go to the E string. And you get to go back and forth between the E and the A string. So make sure your arm is at a place where it's easy for you to access the A and the E string as you do open E and third finger high D. And then you get a bonus note. 29, that's first finger F sharp on the E string. Now what happens sometimes to young musicians is when they go to the E string, their wrist collapses. Make sure your wrist stays open, your palms widen, so it's easy for your first finger to reach F sharp on the E string. Looking all the way ahead, 35, another whole rest. 36, the same music as measure 3 and 11. And then here it gets a little bit funny looking. At measure 44, this is a little bit tricky for the eyes. You have two notes stacked on top of each other. You have high D and you have first finger B. Now you have some Italian there. It says D-I-V, which is short for Davisi. Davisi means to divide it. So when you're in orchestra, you share a stand. There's an outside player and an inside player. The outside player plays the top note. The inside player plays the bottom note. So depending on who's watching this, when, where, and for what, you might all be playing the top note, you might all be playing the bottom note, or you might be playing it as you wish. Bottom line is your eyes have to get used to seeing those two notes stacked on top of each other, and you have to be able to follow either the top line or the bottom line. Okay, other than that, 44 all the way to 52 is the same as measure three and measure 11. Now let's take one final look here at the very end. You have that squiggly looking quarter rest, starting at measure 52 all the way to the end of the piece. So when you do this, you have to make sure you actively count the silence and you feel that pulse in the background. 52 would sound like this. Rest, play, rest, play, rest, play, rest, play. And the silence and the quarter note have the same value of time. So you have to make sure you organize that physically. You're gonna deal with Davisi another time, and you go from arco, polo, with the bow, to pizzicato at measure 52 all the way to the end. That's everything you need to know about this particular piece. I'm gonna do an entire playthrough for you so that you can play the entire piece with a metronome and a play along track. I'm gonna set my metronome here to 100. That's a nice, sorry, 120. That's a nice performance tempo. Are you ready? <coughs> Here is measure one all the way to the end with the metronome set at 120 beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, measure one. One, two, three, four. One, two, measure three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, measure seven. Measure nine. Measure 11, ready, go. Measure 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 15. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Measure 19 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 23, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 
pictures about this. You can start and stop as much as you want. You can also speed up or slow down the playback settings on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Make sure to go slowly, think before you play, but it's nice to be able to see what your part sounds and looks like as you're practicing. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for following the tutorial. This was the first violin part played on a cello, and I look forward to hearing all of your progress as you continue to work on your instruments. Remember, if you practice every day, by the end of the year, you will be taller.